Now, you heard the Maryland governor just now, so let's start briefly with Baltimore, which is rebuilding after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. His presidential opponent, Donald Trump, has said next to nothing about the tragedy, despite verbally trashing the city when he was president. Your comments on the contrast, Michael. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me, Reverend Al. Very much appreciated. I think it shows that Donald Trump doesn't care about communities like this, and it does stand in stark contrast uh, to President Biden, who cares about every single community in this country. I think the people of Baltimore and the people of Maryland are lucky to have a governor in Westmore who is fighting for them, uh, and we're all very lucky to have a president like President Biden who is fighting for the people of Baltimore and the people of Maryland. And, uh, they both. Both the governor and the president understand uh, the necessity of bringing people together, number one, to heal from the tragedy, but also to rebuild. That's why the president was there yesterday uh, talking about the fact that we're going to rebuild the key bridge and we're going to do it using union labor and American steel. And I think that stands, again, in stark contrast to Donald Trump, uh, who is openly telling you uh, that he's hostile and does not care about certain communities, certain cities, certain communities in this country. Uh, and so that is a message that we uh, are going to carry forward uh, throughout the duration of this campaign and make sure that they understand that they'd have a very stark choice between a president and Joe Biden who wakes up every single day thinking about how he's going to bring people together to solve our problems and somebody like Donald Trump who's running a campaign that's based on, as you know, a revenge, a retribution and service of himself, not for others. The Biden campaign team announced today it ended its first quarter of 2024 with a combined $192 million cash on hand after raising $90 million in March, nearly doubling its haul in the first two months of this year and posting its strongest month of grassroots fundraising. The Trump campaign and the RNC raised nearly $66 million in March, ending the month with more than $93 million cash on hand. Comp compare how both campaigns are raising money. Yeah, well, I think what's important is not only the money that we have raised, uh, but how we have raised it and what it's funding at this point in time. Uh, you mentioned uh, the grassroots component. Uh, the first quarter of this campaign, uh, the majority of the money that we raised was actually grassroots donations, right? Those are people like nurses and teachers who are going to JoeBiden.com and giving five or ten bucks at a time uh, because they understand what Joe Biden has done over the course of the past three years, and they understand what's at stake in this election and what we can achieve uh, with another term in office. Uh, we've doubled the size of our email list, for example. And so you have uh, those teachers and nurses who are able to give that 10 bucks, but they're able to do it every single month now uh, and continue to contribute as we build and scale the operation. Uh, the, and what that money is going towards is reaching the voters who are going to decide this election. Uh, that money that we have in that $192 million war chest is what's allowing us to open up over 100 field offices since the year began. It's what allows us to have a staff in all the battleground states on the ground, knocking on doors, uh, calling voters, having conversations in communities, uh, making sure that our digital organizing capacity is allowing us to reach voters um, across a whole uh, range of mediums, right, so that we're able to have conversations every single day. And I think it stands in stark contrast to uh, the lack of fundraising that you see out of the Trump campaign, uh, but as important is how they are raising it. He's down in Mar-a-Lago tonight uh, with a bunch of billionaires, people like John Paulson, who uh, not only wants to cut Social Security, but he's famous for, uh, as a hedge funder, uh, rooting against the American economy, betting against the American economy. So I guess it's no surprise that he's investing in somebody like Donald Trump, who's rooting for the economy to crash. But the whole lot of them is a bunch of billionaire scammers, extremists and racists who understand that if they fund Trump's legal fees, he's going to cut their taxes while he cuts our Social Security. And so that's just the fundamental contrast that you have between the fundraising operation uh, that we're building up and how it's allowing us to communicate with the voters and the money that Trump's raising from a bunch of billionaires that's doing nothing more than paying off his legal fees right now. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.